The time has come, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for a talk radio to announce its true colours. Uh, and it is, uh, in fact, uh, red and it is, in fact, white. Because what's going on uh, is that talk radio right now uh, is moving into England mode. Uh, every single piece of uh, uh, equipment that we have uh, is going to be flying the flag for England tonight because they're playing Germany, of course, uh, in the Euros 2020. Uh, it's the first time they've played amazingly competitively at Wembley um, since... The World Cup in 1966. So, uh, can England win? Can England go through to the next round? It was an incredible night last night. 14 goals in the Euros. Uh, two fantastic games. We're going to talk now uh, to one of the former uh, England heroes, Sol Campbell. 73 caps. Played, of course, at international level for many, many years. Played at the top of club level as well uh, in the Champions League. Um, in Europe, played for Arsenal, played for Spurs. Uh, a proper, proper legend of the game. Sol Campbell, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very Everyone much indeed right? for joining us. Now, I'm not quite sure how I feel about this. They didn't tell me until we just before you and I started talking that we're going to go all, you know, all out for England, right? Because my parents are both from Scotland. And when Scotland played England, I was actually supporting <laughs> Scotland. And I thought Scotland really played so well in that game. They should have really won it. England haven't been terribly inspiring, Sol. Um, what do you think is going to happen tonight? Well, I think there's going to be a lot of nerves uh, in the game. I think people are going to want an exciting game but uh you know hopefully england are tight at the back like they have been uh and going forward a little bit more uh, open and a bit more adventurous and creative uh going forward the last game was really good i saw harry kane uh, get a couple more chances because the movement around him was better uh but you can't really discount the germans they're a top top side they're a proud nation so it's going to be a tough game. Yeah, I mean, they've had their own problems, haven't they? I mean, their last game in the in the group was, was pretty good, but the previous two, they weren't, they looked at the shadow of the form self, didn't they? Yeah, I think for, you know, the game against Portugal, if that team turns up, yeah, it's going to be a difficult night for England. But if the Hungarian, uh, t uh, you know, game turns up, then we we should have a really good game and we hopefully we will we will win. Yeah. Um it's a tough it's 50-50. You just don't know with these games. And sometimes the game is um is either really tight or either either side blows uh, the other uh, other country out yeah. of the way. And this like a 5-1 last time when I played or a tight 1-0 I played uh, in uh, in the last year in 2000 uh, in Belgium. Mm. And do you approach the game differently as a player? If it's a knockout game like tonight, as opposed to if it's a, a you know a, 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 a sort of a round robin you know table game. Yeah, yeah. I think this is the time. This is the moment you start to see who's the proper ballers, who can take the pressure. With the round robin, uh, you know, three games, you can lose one and, and and draw and win and still get through. Now it's like, well, if you lose, you're you're gone. You're going home on your holidays and back at uh, back at your football clubs later on. So it, it adds that little bit dimension, that little bit of. Uh, doubt but for me this is what it's all about the real competition starts now the tournament starts now you find out who's who and then you start, you find some of the big players really kind of fluff their lines we've seen that now uh, in a lot of games with that uh, and then now we've got the extra crowd so hopefully the crowd will will spur on uh, England never know it might kind of dampen the Germans but They've got a lot of experience as well, the Germans in the side. Yeah. So I think they'll kind of hold hold their own. Well, they have. I mean, talking about uh, people fluffing their lines, I mean, last night, Mbappe got up to take that penalty. And I mean, it was mm. such an amazing game anyway. By the time it got to that, I think everybody was like exhausted. It was kind of going, oh, it's surely, <laughs> you know, he can't miss this. Mbappe's not going to miss a penalty. And there, sure enough, he missed the penalty. Yeah, it's such a shame because obviously previously, you know, he's done amazing at the World Cup. And for whatever reason, it just hasn't clicked for him in this particular tournament. Yeah. Uh, he's had the chances. He's had the chances to kind of, you know, had a, a wonderful chance at the end. Uh, Paul Popper put him in and he kind of allowed the ball to run across his body. He should have took it earlier with his right, allowed it to run to his left and, and shanked it wide. So, and then he comes up to the penalty and everyone's thinking, everyone scored. But yeah. then, you know, it, it's just, it's such a shame because he's a wonderful player and he will come back as a young guy. But, you know, he's not had the, the best of tournaments. No, yeah, he hasn't. And Portugal out, of course, as well. Um, Belgium are looking pretty good. Who, who have you been impressed with, Sol, so far? The Italians. They've been the all... No one's been perfect. No one's been perfect. Uh, the Italians have been really, you know, scoring goals quite tight at the back as well. And also, when you think about it, Denmark... They've played amazing. They've been great, I think. They're really, really good. <laughs> They've been amazing. I mean, it's like there's something else going on there. 
is that you know obviously uh, Ericsson, the scenario really you know tragic scenario yeah. that is kind of always galvanized the team mm. and they're playing amazing they're playing with confidence they're like they're controlling the back line they're coming through the lines they're defining holes they're scoring amazing goals they're defending for their lives it's like there's something else mm. going on there you do wonder if they're going to be you know this year's Greece you know, when they kind of surprised everybody and won it a few years back, because they have that kind of, you know, you look at Denmark and you kind of go, oh yeah, I kind of know those guys, but you don't, they're not sort of, they're not for us anyway, a lot of household names. Yeah, I understand that. There was, you know, the Castro Smarco at the back and things like that and the goalkeeper, but with Greece, Tenare, they were really tight and they kind of, you know, won nils and nil nils and, you know, got through a one like but with, uh, with Denmark, they've been expensive. They've been playing fantastic football. They're scoring amazing goals. So it's, slightly, it's a slight difference. But those two teams have really kind of shown um, their, their, their colours and really everyone's stepped up and everyone's playing really, really proper football for both teams. Sure. And, and for Gareth Southgate tonight, Sol, what do you think he needs to do in terms of who he picks? Because there's a lot of talk about him being a bit too cautious sometimes, not really putting in enough players who, mm. who can, as you say, feed Harry Kane. Um, who do you think he needs to pick up front? I think he's going to have a problem because obviously, you know, Mount and Foden, that is probably in his head before the tournament. That's his, that's his team, you mm. know, in and around, uh, in and around Kane. Saka's come in and Jack Gillis has come in and they've played wonderful. So it's in a way, it's good to have that kind of problem. Uh, and Sterling obviously is, is knocking them in as well. And he's, he's uh, you know, signing his uh, critics and he's going, you know, showing his character, strength to strength, being a top, top player. So it's going to have a problem. Who does he go back? Because it's not their fault, obviously, with the COVID scenario, uh, Mount missing, the, missing the, the last game. So he might go back to that formation and if it doesn't work I can see Jack Grealish and um, uh, Saka coming on maybe second off they've both been, they've both been pretty inspirational players haven't they wonderful yeah. they've been incredible good wonderful. To, really good to watch so without wishing to give too much away Sol um, obviously <laughs> you, I could going to ask you for a prediction tonight I've already gone I've actually gone um, uh, the, the mother of my two youngest children is German right so half German so they my kids are actually sporting <laughs> Germany right which is slightly off putting <laughs> um, but uh, I'm going 2-1 Germany do you know what? I would agree with that. I would I will go. It's going to be a tight game, nervy game, and uh, I'm going England sneak a nice little 2-1 win. Okay. And if England yeah. can get through, um, they could have a relatively easy uh, next game. Could they win it? They can definitely get the, 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 the... It's opening up. The draw is opening up very, very nicely. So now we've got to do the business now with Germany. And uh, we can't take anyone for granted. So really, take, take care of this game first. And it opens up and we could easily, not easily, still got to do the work. You know, you never know. But we can get to the final. It's not like we've got too many big, big obstacles. Mm. But sometimes, you know, if Denmark gets in there, there's there's, there's check. You, you, you never know. You never know. You never know. But it's opened up nicely for England. Let's see if we can go all the way, at least get to the final. And are you, are you getting out to the pub to watch it or are you going to be relaxing at home? No, I'm doing I'm doing talk sport. Oh, so uh, I'll be there. I've been doing talk sport all all the way through uh, following England, and uh, I'll be there tonight. Well, so you'll I'll, be at Wembley, later, top man. Excellent. Well, we should look out Wembley. for you. Wembley, uh, listen out for you at Wembley. Sol Campbell on talk sport tonight. Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, former England player called seventy three caps. He thinks it's a, just about a two one win for England. I'm sort of in two minds, as I say. Uh, being Scottish, you, I find it quite difficult to, to support England. But I guess I'll probably be forced into it because talk radio now uh, is all about supporting England tonight. It's all about making sure that the three lines and the sign of the three lines is all over the place. Uh, you'll see it on the screen. Uh, you'll see it on our apps. You'll see it on our Twitter. You'll see it on our Facebook page. And, of course, you'll see it uh, on YouTube as well. This is the Independent Republican, Mike Graham. 